Today I want to do a comparison of Diablo 2 Resurrected and Diablo 4. This is by no means hating on either game. First off, I want to start with graphics. Diablo 4 more than likely wins in this category for majority of people, but some people may prefer the art style of Diablo 2 Resurrected. The ability to switch between legacy graphics and the new remastered Diablo 2 Resurrected graphics is a really cool touch for all us nostalgic players who love Diablo 2 and the art style. I have to appreciate how Diablo 4 has gone back to the more dark art style in comparison to Diablo 3, which I think strayed away from the style of Diablo 2 and went in a more World of Warcraft art style. Let me know what you personally think about the art style in Diablo 3 compared to 2 and 4 despite that not really being a focus in this video. I think overall the graphics in Diablo 4 look really great. And I think also Diablo 2 Resurrected with the remastered graphics, they just really hit it out of the park. Both games definitely pass the test when it comes to the art. Next I want to talk about the sound. That's the soundtrack as well as the audio quality. Obviously there's going to be higher quality, fidelity on Diablo 4. Directional audio, sound effects such as the noises when your sword hits something. All that sound design team did a lot of things like I'll show that in the background like they're hitting fruits and hitting ground beef to make sounds for when you're hitting the monsters and everything like that. Although I think the soundtrack is good on both games, I think the soundtrack on Diablo 2 is better, the one that's done by Matt Yulman. I'll put some of that in the background while I'm talking right now. I think the sound effects are better in Diablo 4, but I think the soundtrack in Diablo 2 Resurrected, or Diablo 2, is just better. Diablo 2 definitely feels a bit dated compared to Diablo 4, which feels more snappy and responsive. Diablo 4 feels like it's more mechanical, and it is, but there's also the system's ARPG factor in the background that feels like you can only outplay so much mechanically and you will be gear and knowledge checked just like you are in Diablo 2. Diablo 2 feels more like you have the gear and knowledge checked but if you have a well made build you can get away with just clicking and waiting on the enemy to die essentially unless it's things like Stygian dolls that explode and can take you out if you're not careful or souls that can be in a pack and be dangerous even if you have max lightning resist. On Diablo 4 things like the dodge mechanic adds an element of outplay that some players may or may not like. Also many Diablo 2 players are probably used to having more mobility in the form of teleporting, whether via the Enigma rune word or using a sorceress. I think the sorceress is way more mobile in Diablo 2 with teleport compared to on D4. Being able to literally go through walls and straight to where you want to go just feels different. Diablo 4 has a more arcade feel but they both have a feel similar to that old game Gauntlet Dark Legacy except with deeper character customization. Don't get me wrong, they both have the action part of ARPG down. I just think Diablo 4 is more modern and takes advantage of more technology to present things in a more digestible way. Diablo 2 is less forgiving from a gameplay perspective and shipped with less quality of life features. If I remember correctly, there was a time when we couldn't even purchase health potions from a vendor. The design of the stash and the inventory in Diablo 2 and 4 are subjective things, but I prefer the look on Diablo 2, especially Resurrected. I feel like the item images as well as the inventory slots are too small on Diablo 4. It doesn't really showcase the art. Diablo 4 has more visual customization such as horse mounts, transmogrification, a system where you can change the appearance of one of your items such as your helmet to the appearance of a different helmet. You can do this with your swords, boots, whatever the case may be. Overall, in terms of gameplay, you're doing pretty similar things in both games essentially, but I think the massive difference comes down to the feel of the gameplay, whether that's traveling place to place, combat, building your characters, or last but not least, the itemization. Diablo 2 has 385 or so uniques, while Diablo 4 only has 60 or something many of which are class specific essentially pigeonholing them into being very use case specific items 
sort of like set items from Diablo 3 which people either love or hate. Diablo 2 has set items as well but they're not the absolute meta items to be using. There are however a few that are really great like G-Face, Laying of Hands, Trang's Gloves for faster cast rate or his belt for cannot be frozen, Mavina's belt to run faster. Don't get me wrong, sets on Diablo 2 are not bad but they're nowhere near as good as Rune Words. This is another thing that players either love or hate. Rune Words arguably make many items obsolete in some eyes. For instance, when Grief was released, many said unique items like the Grandfather or Doombringer was now worthless. Prior to the introduction of Enigma, the Sorceress was the only character that could spam teleport endlessly and travel through walls. Many players thought that this made the game too easy, others thought that it made magic finding and interacting with the game in general more fun. Diablo 4 and 2 have both gone through different iterations on their itemization. I think it's important to note that the itemization in Diablo 2 is the result of updates from the release in June 2000 until August 2005, adding the Pandemonium event and Hellfire torches as well as rune words such as Treachery. After that, there would still be latter seasons supported up until season 18 ending in June of 2016. That is, until Diablo 2 Resurrected was released August 13th, 2021, bringing a new look. New rune words came to the game April 14th, 2022, as well as introducing Terror Zones on the next patch. A system allowing you to have any area of the game essentially be capable of dropping any item in the game and potentially having monsters that can yield you more XP than anywhere else by having the spawned monsters 2-5 to five levels higher than you, making dropping items and leveling easier than ever before, despite leveling taking astronomically longer in Diablo 2 than it does in 4 which in my case usually leads me to stop leveling after 93 or so on Diablo 2 characters. The itemization on Diablo 2 feels a lot deeper, not only because of the fact there are more uniques to be found as well as rune words to be made and even treasured magic items to be found. Yes, blue items matter. Many people played Diablo 2 for 20 years and still never found every item in the game. In some opinions that's bad itemization, in other opinions, that's a great game that keeps you coming back and has true randomization. Diablo 4, especially after more recent updates, feels a lot easier to find every item in the game and even has deterministic ways to find uber uniques, which are now referred to as mystic items. I feel like Diablo 4 has a more dynamic itemization system that's catered more towards a casual player that's less dedicated to grinding and likely would not enjoy the feeling of the item chase on Diablo 2. At the end of the day, the end game's essentially repeating the same task over and over in search of something better, regardless of which of the two games you're playing. I would say in its current state, Diablo 4 has more to be desired in terms of the need for variety and itemization, especially when it comes to unique items that could be used on any class, and not just class-specific cookie-cutter build items that feel like they funnel you into a specific playstyle. This is a problem that many people had with Diablo 3 where essentially each class had one, maybe two viable builds for endgame, and if you wanted to play that particular class, you were going to play that one build and wear that one set of gear. Some would argue a similar problem was caused on Diablo 2 with rune words like Grief and later Mosaic on Diablo 2 Resurrected. This brings up the subject of power creep in games and how it can make previous items irrelevant or fall out of the meta, which can be a good or bad thing depending on who you ask. Diablo 2 and Diablo 4 both shipped with five classes, both sharing the Barbarian, Sork, and Amazon, also known as the Rogue on Diablo 4. Diablo 4 is looking to get a new class soon, the Spiritborn. After the Lord of Destruction expansion, Diablo 2 got two new classes, the Assassin and the Druid. The Rogue in Diablo 4 is ironically like a combination of the Assassin and the Amazon from Diablo 2, as well as the Demon Hunter from Diablo 3. Each class has its own personality on both games, but I feel like Diablo 4 has a more restricted class theme system where a Barbarian simply cannot use bow and arrow, and a Rogue can't wield a two-handed mace. This goes back to the itemization system as well, but the skill trees as well in Diablo 4 feel like you're funneled into the obvious choice or whatever the broken flavor of the month build currently is. Both games offer skills to choose from in order to create a build and tailor fit your character the way you want, 
I just feel like Diablo 4 does so in a hold your hand type of way that allows for less creativity and freedom. Even if that freedom is to brick your character and find out later you wasted hours of gameplay because you didn't know to go on that one forum during a time period where most online communication was done via America Online. I think Diablo 4 can deepen their skill tree system and add a lot more depth that'll expand the longevity of seasons and overall improve the gameplay experience in general. A lot could be learned from looking at a game like Last Epoch and the way they handle skill trees for individual abilities. It's really impressive how well done the cinematics for Diablo 2 were all the way back in 2000. The story of Diablo 2 pretty much is the game played over again three times through three difficulty levels. Diablo 4 is played once and then can be skipped after the first playthrough is done. Your next character has an option to skip the story, which in my opinion may have not been the best choice for the gameplay in Diablo 4. Definitely not having to repeat Lilith statues was a great thing, but skipping the story might have actually hurt the longevity of seasonal play and everything else. The story offers the most variety out of anything else in Diablo 4, and I think them adding the skip might have actually hurt some seasonal longevity and instead funnel everybody into this strategy of leveling as fast as humanly possible, rushing through content only to wind up bored. As far as the actual lore and content within the stories, I think Diablo 4 does a better job cinematically and with cutscene presentation, which should be expected given the use of more modern technology, but Diablo 2 is no slouch in this department as well. Looking at legacy cutscenes from the game as well as the remastered versions, you can see that a lot of care was put into the game and that it stands the test of time. I think with Diablo 4 they have to be holding out on us for some future DLC or something because where is Diablo? I think that that actually would be a good hand for them to eventually play with the DLC. I'm sure people would eat it up. I think both games have no issues in the story department, but I don't really play ARPG games like this where I min-max my gear and character specifically. I don't really play them for the story modes. I'm a notorious dialogue skipper like some of you may be. Overall, I think the story and the lore is always something that's been a strong suit of Blizzard. Except for that one time when somebody got killed by a butterfly, but let's not talk about that. I know there's probably a bunch of different things that I didn't mention that I missed that I maybe didn't go into quite as much detail as you possibly wanted. Maybe especially with the story. I didn't include any spoilers or anything like that. But I just wanted to kind of talk about a broad overview. My opinion as somebody who's put in a bunch of hours into both of the games. Definitely way more in Diablo 2 so I'm going to be biased. A little bit towards that but at the same time I mean you saw where I said Diablo 2 story is basically repeating the same thing on three different difficulty levels so I mean I'm not bashing it when I'm saying that I'm just kind of telling it how it is and then Diablo 4 I feel like they didn't even have enough faith in the story to where now they're just funneling us into dungeons or into Helltide or wherever the latest meta for leveling is. So, I mean, I think they could have kept the story on a pedestal a little bit because it really does have the biggest variety and visuals and gameplay experiences, in my opinion, with the bosses and the variety. Anyways, hope everybody has a good one. Let me know what you think and take it easy.